we go, a match underway, season underway, as far as Warrington and St. Helens are concerned. They have possession of St. Helens, the away team in the opening stages of all hammered downfield and a chance for them to try and assert themselves in these early stages by bringing it downfield inside this, um, this opening 20 minutes. Three bruising moments for bodies that have not coasted regularly for a while. It's a knock on there as well. A knock on by Willie Manu. He's been tackled and as he picks himself up, he's simply lost the ball. He's spilt that ball. It's a clean knock on. It's Warrington's head and feet 25 metres out. Yeah, some decent bits of grip from the Warrington team there. They first met Wormsley head on. Well, gave him a bit of a touch up and then Willie Manu with the carry and they were quite vigorous with him and he spilled the ball cold. So Warrington with an attacking opportunity inside this opening minute. The ball is fed into that scrum and it comes to Michael Monaghan along the line and Ratchford the fullback is in there but it's a two-man, three-man welcoming committee of St. Helens defenders who will put him down. Still about 22 metres away. Hill now with the uh, distinctive head guard driving it in. A lot of expectation on his shoulders this year. He has delivered the last couple of years, of course, but in the absence of Morley and Carvel, suddenly that front row is uh, looking a little less awesome than it might have done. It's um, taken in by Waterhouse, Trent Waterhouse, who tackled 10 metres away. Back it comes to Asatasi, the dainty boy, of course, Roy Asatasi, with, um, with countless experience that he brings to this club as well. It's uh, thrown out to this right-hand side and suddenly there's an opportunity it's going to be a try for Joel Monaghan. A minute and 39 seconds play when Joel Monaghan goes over in the corner. His brother Michael very much involved in the build-up as well. They have caught St. Helens Cole. It's Warrington to get the first try. Yeah, great move from Warrington and Bridges, the architect of the, the last piece of the architect. Great hands to release Monaghan because the St. Helens defence is flying across the... The set play from the Warrington team on the back of the football from Willie Manu gives them a good field position, but the players have to be executed. Monaghan comes up with a terrific pass. Michael, the halfback, comes up with a terrific pass out to Bridge, out the back door, who releases Joel Monaghan, who's one of the best finishes in the game for sure. And the kids have come on this near side. Well, that's settled the locals down, hasn't it? The St. Helens fans behind that, um, that try, try line that um, Warrington have just scored at. Will just be a little flat in these early stages because it has not been the start they would have wanted. Knock on in that opening set and Warrington making them pay. Stephen Ratchford is the man who's going to line up the kick here on this, uh, this right hand side. Just a, a stride in from the touchline. Remember the, uh, the Twitter tonight? Keep us, um, keep us lively with your conversation. Hashtag BBCRL. We've, uh, we've had one coming in from Lee Smith who's. Um, He's not one of ours anymore, is he? He's got a review these days, hasn't he? Newcastle Falcons, but once of Wakefield, very recently of Wakefield, Lee Smith says, Saints by between one and five points for me tonight. What's everyone else thinking? And Tommy Lee also, all the kids gone wide from Ratchford. Tommy Lee also saying, good to see young English players in both teams. 4 0 Warrington lead, and that's a good point from Tommy Lee. There are a lot of good English players, in, in, young English players in both teams. Oh, there always has been. And I think going back to our previous conversation, not to distract from this game for too long on the restart is that there's a fear that they'll bring imports in. Well, I don't think they will. They'll stick with the young English players, they'll stick with the young English talent. We just need to ensure that the clubs are producing them. 4-0, Warrington lead. With uh, just over three minutes of this game played, St. Helens have had the ball in their hands, but not for long before they fumbled it. And now they look for the big kick downfield, which is uh, taken safely enough by Joel Monaghan and hands it on to Roy Asatars, who just puts it in a big bear-like grip in his right hand and then runs it back at that St. Helens advancing line, which was led on that occasion by the Carthys guard for the, 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 the suggestion of a break from Richie Myler on his 100th appearance for Warrington tonight. And now as a pass, he comes clattering forward again, who in three carries, Warrington have taken it up to the 40-metre mark. High and throws it left, and Myler further left, and Waterhouse out to that left wing over there where Wiley steps in. And there's some grunts and groans from the Warrington fans who thought that he was partially dealt with on the halfway line, picked up by Atkins now, who has a little scamper from the acting half position. And on tackle five, finds himself 10 metres inside St. Helens' territory, so Milo with a punchy kick downfield, it bobs and bounces and skips into the in-goal area, and it's a perfect kick because it holds up there, well in fact it had just gone out. Swift, the young St. Helens wing, I think, put a foot behind the, 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 the try line, the dead ball line, and carried that ball down. So that's a 20 metre restart, but the thing about Warrington's last day, it was very quick, they played the balls was very quick, and they started last week, last week in the friendly against us like that and it's really hard to hold them 
Siki Hyam throwing a little bit of width out on my half as well and finding some edge, uh, some spaces on the edge. What does Kyle Amor look like with that beard and the hair? <laughs> well, he's the man who's tackled here. Well, for, for our listeners, always because they, unless you're watching and listening at the same time, he looks like something like a throwback. Is that the right expression? Yeah, well, he's, he's, he's had the, the beard, the scraggly beard and scraggly hair for some time. And at the end of the season party at Wakefield last year, they had to go in fancy dress. He turned up as a tramp. And a lot of people, a lot of people in the public actually thought he was a trap. He wasn't allowed into a couple of places. They had to convince them and that he was, um, he was a bona fide rugby league player on a, on a nice out. Here comes a little kick down field, which Rashford has taken well enough and runs it back towards the 15 metres. Well, Saints concentrating on the one side of the field, trying to work over a few of the Warrington players and get their energy levels down with a little bit of defence to do. A short little kick that time from Walsh, trying to test out Rashford to move, test out his bravery, really, see if he's He's got the way with all to get forward and cover the ball, and he did. Here comes Hill, just carried by him. There's three Sir Alex players who are holding on to him, but he manages to get another two, three yards further forward before eventually he's put down. Michael Monaghan, Rashford, hits for the line again, and down his right-hand side. They are finding some progress, Warrington. This time, it's Bridge who's tackled, but only ten metres inside the St. Helens half. Monaghan again. Along the line it goes, it's the young Ben Curry who dances forward but can't go too far before St. Helens defenders are there to meet him. Mickey Hyam picks up from the acting half by position. Michael Monaghan sends it steepling high. Lomax can't get anywhere near him. He falls in pass into the hands of Chris Bridge, but he's going to be caught a hold off and dragged out of play. It'll be the, the handover here. Six and a half minutes play. Well, no doubt that we've not seen much of him so far, but one of the St. Helens danger men is, um, is James Roby. And um, Michael Monaghan gave us his thoughts before the game as to how he and his teammates go about stopping James Roby. He's probably the fittest player in the Super League, and you know, he's a player that you need to watch for the whole 80. He's, um, you know, he doesn't sort of you know, guess out too too often. So you know, for us, it's, it's making sure we do the job on him for the full 80 minutes. And um, you know, generally, we've done that pretty well most times we've played him, and you know, that'll be the challenge again. It's a full team effort. It's, you know, it's very rarely hooker on hooker uh, trying to shut each other down. It's, and you need a full team work against his strengths and then hopefully uh, you know, expose his weaknesses a little bit. Well, here's Roby moving up to dummy half here now, Boston Helens, his position where he, he taunts the opposition and he's tries to help it on and um, St. Helens find themselves through McCarthy Scarsbrook fighting away to within 10 metres of that halfway line. They go to the right-hand side here to Saints. Warrington defenders swarming around, making sure the progress is kept to a minimum. Five tackles gone. Saints just inside Warrington territory, on that right-hand side. Walsh throws it back, working on the left foot. Jacks a kick high, under a little bit of pressure. So it's high, but not a long way down field. And Monaghan does very well to hold on, because Gary Wheeler was all over him, and, and Joe Monaghan gets it back for Warrington. Well, to be fair, if you're going to put your money on anybody to collect the high ball, it's going to be Joe Monaghan. He's very confident, both with the ball in attack and defensively in relation to catching the ball, but did have a little bit of snow on it, that uh, ball. Nice and high. Ratchford. Who wears the number six? He's uh, been making not too much of it. Libre is, of course, watching on uh, from the stand here tonight. By the way, we'll, we'll hear a wonderful um, little feature with, with Lee Breers. He's in conversation with Tanya Arnold at half time, talking about life after retirement and talking about his career. So make sure you listen for that at half time in this game. And we'll bring you all the chat, of course, after the match, the final half hour of the game. Lots of people will be hearing from, including Brian McDermott, the lead coach. And uh, Josh Hodgson at Hulkingston Rovers, Liam Finn at Casper, lots of others as well. And of course, Brian Noble of Salford will be with us throughout the evening too. St. Helens in possession, inside their own half at the moment. It's um, moved to that right-hand side. Swift was the man who was up there in the line, but now moves his way back towards the wing. Here comes Carl Amor. Who's uh, driven there, lost the ball, but it was stolen away, the referee said. Mickey Hyam shakes his head to Warrington Vickers, who runs away. He's not happy with that. But a penalty for Saints that will relieve them now. I think that's the first penalty, and we're nearly 10 minutes into the game. This is a quick game for our listeners. They're playing the ball really quickly. Both teams are testing each other out the quality of their skill. I'm not sure he just didn't drop that call there for Kyle Amor, but Mickey Hyam adjudicated to have uh, reefed the ball. Well, we talk about coaches having uh, their men on the field in terms of the generals, and Luke Walsh will no doubt be one of uh, Nathan Brown's men on the field. He's more than a passing resemblance of Nathan Brown as well, don't you think? Same hairstyle, anyway. <laughs> you got him down the same as Nathan Brown on the back of his haircut, or lack of haircut. Yeah, Nathan Brown had lovely locks of hair when he was a player, didn't he? But uh, these days, 
It's a passing resemblance. It's just a passing resemblance. Here's St. Helens moving up to within 15 metres, and it is Luke Walsh is involved again and helps it off for Wilkin, and Wilkin crashes forward, but there are willing defenders there, including Mickey Hyde, who made that tackle. Here comes Walsh again. The pass is a little bit off the ground. It's been knocked off by the top. It's got it. It was a, a difficult pass. Boy, oh, he's been allowed to keep it off his leg. Well, he's done well to keep possession, and here comes that man we were talking about, Roby, having to be watched by the entire Warrington side, as Michael Monaghan said, and he had to be watched there because he was just probing around that, uh, that try line, and then Walsh puts the kick in towards that right-hand side, it's uh, kept alive over there, St. Helens still had it, Turner now is trying to get a hold of it, he's lost it, Warrington are in, well the kick seemed as though it was a certain try, but somehow Warrington survived, their ballooning possession here, very nearly a knock-on, in fact it was a knock-on by Ryan Atkins according to the referee. Uh, Saints have turned the heat up, good line speed defensively, there's a ricochet, they got the ball back, and and he's acting to fumble the ball and Mr. Benson's adjudicated there was a knock on and that's on the back of a bit of thin Ellen shirt in your face. Well the kick from Walsh looks as though they set up making so it didn't quite work out the way he would have wanted, but second prize for St. Helens is to retain possession ten yards away from the opponent's line, and that's what they should have here, all things being equal, because it's a slow down, St. Helens head and tee. It's a bouncing night at the Halliwell Jones Stadium, packed to the rafters here. And everybody enjoyed the opening because it has been pretty good stuff. But left it comes to Lomax. Lomax the fullback. Into that line. Where's the, uh, the head guard, of course, because of the horrific head injury he suffered as a youngster playing for St. Helens. But that will and truly behind him. And that's the last remnants, of course, the head guard. Here it's taken on by Wheeler. There's a couple of strides away from that Warrington line. Roby again bends his back and offers it up. And St. Helens again probing this Warrington line. But Warrington holding firm just at the moment. Roby once more picks it up, a couple of yards again, away again, walks to that right-hand side, Lomax is in the line, here comes Turner, Turner tries to hand off, flicks out a fantastic pass, and Tommy Makinson will score in the corner, and what about that pass from Jordan Turner, it still needed a diving finish from Makinson, but 14 minutes played, St. Helens have a wonder try, it's four apiece. Well, that is a wonder try, Makinson into the corner, he'll be able to applaud it for the diving finish, but... That's Jordan Turner every day and all day because Warrington had that covered and he got his right hand free and he's flipped this ball out and this is a wonderful try. Well, we're having a look again on the big screen and we'll watch this time and time again. He's not gone for the video... He's only gone for the video replay here. He's not gone for the video rep. He has given the... No, he has given the try. Oh, well, uh, uh, groans of it being a forward pass for Warrington supporters around us and uh, from the angle we've just seen, they're... Uh, there might be a case for that, but then again, from that other angle, it, it looks a very legitimate pass. But it's worth watching all day, this one, isn't it? Well, it's great if it comes off, I think, if you're a, a Warrington defender. That's uh, borderline. Well, just to describe that, what happened was as, um, as Jordan Summer kind of dived through the line and was being tackled, and as he did that, he just flicked it away to his right-hand side. Tommy Makinson was sharp and alert to take it. And he was very tight to the touchline, so he had to die to finish. And he did that athletically. The try has been given. It is four points apiece. And that, let's see how good a kicker Luke Walsh is. Because he's tight to the right touchline. A little smile on his face. No doubt because he's got the, uh, the voices of the Warrington supporters on that side right in his ear. How much has he listened to them? Not much, because he's put that kick right between the sticks. And St. Helens have the lead. 13 minutes played now. It's Warrington 4, St. Helens 6. They the first got uh, the Warrington line and Warrington Tall and Tedson had it covered and a great expansive play to the left hand side and Turner goes through the line on the attention of two Warrington players and flicks the ball out and but there was four it wasn't a six pointer. So here we go again. Stefan Ratchford to get us underway. With um, thirty minutes on the clock, two tries on the scoreboard. And a lot of quality rugby league we've seen in the, in the opening 30 minutes or so, not we? I think we've seen in the last month, right across the country, some terrible weather. Most of the friends have been played in terrible weather. And then for this one, we've the skies are clear, the ground's hard, and we've got two fantastic rugby teams play rugby. And what we've got used to in recent years is, is making excuses for teams at the start of the year, saying, well, it is the start of the year, and things aren't clicking as they might do, and skills are not as they might be, and... Oh, that looks like a knock-on. It is a knock-on. Oh, again, it's interference. It looks as though uh, Jones had knocked on for St. Helens, but the referee said there was interference as he picked himself off. 
So although the ball did bobble, it will be a penalty here for St. Helens, 30 metres from their own line. But just going to that, back to that point, we've been, a, a lot of start of year, start of seasons, we've been excusing players because it's the start of the year, things aren't working. But I tell you what, the quality last week, Wigan Huddersfield, and the quality here tonight, it almost feels like mid-season between these, these teams. Well, you're ready to play. I'm, I'm, my view on that is it's generally the weather that alters that. That's why at the start of the year, if we've got driving rain and wind and, and rain, it's difficult to play the weather you want to play. There are no excuses tonight. There were no excuses last week because the weather was good. And we're seeing the right fair. And no, uh, no excuses with the ball. John Wilkin was telling us last week it's a different grip this year. A lot easier to carry. Little Max out to Turner. St. Helens threatening again here. 15 metres away from that Warrington line. Right-hand side. Walsh. Offering it to a couple, gives it to Amor, who goes pushing his way forward again. Real powerhouse player. And he's held up only eight yards away from Warrington Territory. Roby goes off again, has a little run and a scamper, or he's lost it backwards. He's flicked it out backwards, which keeps it alive. And Lomax fancied he see the little gap and he darted into it, but it closed quickly. Warrington's defenders quickly recovering. That was tackle five. Here comes the last. Left it comes again, another little step here from Wheeler. Wheeler's coffee back to the middle. Roby! Nobody saw him coming. It might be a team job to stop him with a team switched off because Roby flying off it at the angle between the defenders. A second St. Helens try. And what a response that is to conceding so early in this game. I'll put that try down to Gary Wheeler. Because the Warrington players all thought he was going to play on the outside. He's a threat with the ball. He steps off his left foot, and steps off his left foot, comes back on the inside. And James Roby stayed alive after passing the ball and just hit a hole between two Warrington defenders and wasn't going to be stopped from there. So he played the ball, passed the ball from Dummy Half. Wheeler comes back towards him, he gets himself back on side and hits the hole. That's why James Roby's such a threat. Well, we heard from Michael Monaghan a few moments ago about how the whole team has to switch on and keep him watched and he is, he's a phenomenally fit player as well isn't he James Roby a lot of people saying he is the fittest player in Super League 18 in it hooker and he just goes and goes doesn't he well traditionally as, as, as we're probably all well aware the hooker touches the ball more than any other player involved more than any other player in the game so to do it to the quality that he has for 80 minutes pretty much every week Seems to close to the same thing. He was injured the most of last year, remember? Yeah. Well, he said that you were an ex-game. Well, it's not quite the ball on his chairs, Robin, no. <laughs> I didn't move out of the five-metre mud track in the middle of the field. All the game. Very different game in those days, wasn't it? But a former Great Britain captain, captain. Don't, don't, don't. All that's exciting, my friend. Don't yourself. All that's exciting. Absolutely. And you were the Great Britain captain. On Tim, 1984. I went all right, Woodsy. Don't you worry about me. You worry about your own game. I went all right. I'm just worried you're on the plane, your role. Back in those days of black and white rugby league. And not oh, St. Helens has hopped on again here. Willie Manu, well, surely he did. Surely he did. Yeah, I thought he did. 12,000 people thought he did as well. He, um, we just thought he really agreed. He knocked on. We've just seen the replay. He knocked on. I think the referee and the touch judges have decided that the ball went backwards. So, um, they've given him the benefit of the doubt. Here's Carl Amor again, with his frizzy hair and frizzy beard, driving it eight metres away from the halfway line. Roby scoops it out, big pass out to Walsh, who can stand 20 yards to his left, because he knew that pass was coming like a bullet. And there's a kick by Walsh towards the corner. How good a kick is that, by the way? That is absolutely very nearly perfect. It is. It is. It was behind the 40 metre mark, yes, and the ball has passed out of play within a foot of the left corner flag. I mean, that, that was a kick that had everything. That had attacking potential. Warrington had to deal with it. It could have been a try if a St. Helens man had got up there. Warrington had to deal with it. But at the back end of that, so when the ball goes out of play, it's a 40-20 anyway. St. Helens head and feet. How good is this Luke Walsh from what we've seen in the early stages? Well, I think Nathan Brown was alluding to the fact that he's, if he's on the front foot and he's kicking well, there's no better kicker. And there's your first example of it. Absolutely extraordinary kick from Luke Walsh. And now, St. Helens find themselves with head and feed, 10 metres away from the Warrington line. What a start to the season this has been for them. It's taken on by Johnny Lomax. Warrington 4, St. Helens 12. Warrington first blood, but St. Helens in their pomp ever since. Carl Amor up towards the goal line, held up just on that goal line. Roby's in there again. Oh, Amor's injured here. Oh, that's the referee. Oh, Amor, I think he might have got in here. The referee suddenly blows his whistle and puts the square in the air to say, you know what, we'll have a look at this. 
because Carl Amor might actually, in that tackle, have reached over and touched it down. Now, have a look at the body language. How confident does he look? Well, having a look at the replay here. It's a sneaky one if he's got it. I don't think he's sure. He's a front rower, they're never sure. Well, he's held up by a couple of defenders, and then two more come and join, and he's pushing and pushing here. He's very close to the goal line, and, and then the, the tackle is completed, and we see the ball, and the St. Evans fans, who are so much closer to that big screen than we are, have suddenly left out a, a real gusto of a roar, because they think that this is a try. Are we going to see it? Oh, yes, it is a try. Or is, well, Carl Amor's down on the ground. This is going to take a bit of adjudication. He definitely has touched it down over the goal line. The question is whether there's an element of double movement in here. Well, does his ball carry in hand? Oh, that's a try. No double movement. Well, they're having a look at it very closely. This is the angle that tells us we've got it framed on the big screen at the moment. Carl Amor goes, goes down flat on his back and then promotes the ball and there is just one movement and then a second. Does the elbow hit the ground with that first movement? Is well, that enough? That's a question of the decision time. Here they go. Is this a double movement or is it a try? We'll know in a minute. So Helen's fans say it is and the referee, the video referee, says it's a try as well. Kyle Abel from a matter of an inch has scored St. Helen's third try of the night. Well that's his true force. But he was carrying the ball to lay the line, that is to set the platform for the move that was coming up through St. Helen. And he decided, hold on a minute, I'm a bit close to the line here, I might as well kick my arm out and get it over, and he does just that. Perfectly fair try, great try. Well, the St. Helen's players going back inside their own half, ready for the kick-off when it comes after Luke Walsh has taken his goal kick. And the St. Helen's fans behind them are giving an absolute hero's reception because it has been quite a response from St. Helens. Warrington first score, 4-0 after 2 minutes. It was still 4-0 after 12, but now after 19 minutes, it is 4 for Warrington, 18 for St. Helens. Three tries in 7 minutes has put them in the absolute ascendancy here. This is a real super show we're seeing from St. Helens. It's been a terrific response from the first four minutes, hasn't it, which was all Warrington, and then they've just ploughed their way up the field, and the back of the kicking game from Lou Walsh is Superb kicking game to give him the field position. And hey ho, there you go. And on the stopping Kyle Amor there. On Twitter, uh, Saito Matasar is uh, very much stating the obvious thing. Helens are looking good. Boy, are they looking good. And on the hashtag BBCRL, you want to join in the conversation. I guess this is the point of the game as well, where Tony Smith gets to learn a bit about some of those players who've had to step up into the senior roles. No Morley, no Carbell, no Breers. Well, they've lost a few, no Hodgson, they've lost a few senior players who could steady the ship. Now it's the likes of Ratchford and, and Myler and, and Westwood are going to have to do this job for them, isn't it? Well, there's nobody else, so you're right, would you? But Saints look like they're with a, a sharp last few months. They're looking clinical, they're looking clean, they're looking crisp. People knowing what they're doing and where they're doing it, and these extra scores have given some vigour into their leg drive when they're carrying the ball. So it's, for me, it's for Warrington to respond. Here's Walsh with another kick downfield, hoping it's a punisher, this time down the middle. It's going to bounce into the hands of Ratchford. It's up to the 10-metre line. A little jiggle on the hips and then runs it forward. And a couple of St. Helens players are there to meet him. The whole line of St. Helens players were there to meet him. But a couple in that particular patch of the field, making sure he's going no further forward. The, the other thing I'll mention was is Warrington haven't had any ball for, what, nine or ten minutes. They didn't really, you know, they, they dropped the ball and they get two penalties away and... So wherever you are in this game, if you get free position away to the opposition, an opposition with the quality of St. Helens, it's going to be tough for you. And our colleague Tanya Arnold, um, also on Twitter, she makes a good point. Uh, St. Helens looking good. They've still got Mossy Marcel to come. This is a big pack, and they've still got the biggest beast of them all to come as well when he gets fit. Yeah, watch the shadows come. Even our listeners will see the shadows when he gets on the field. 22 minutes play, very nearly. Warrington feel they're being slowed down in the rock. Back it comes now to Ratchford to kick off the left foot. Straight down the throat of Lomax, who catches it on the 10 metre line. And because he catches it where he does, he can run it back towards the 30 before eventually the Warrington line is up there to meet him and make the tackle a good one. And St. Helens start from uh, not too far away from the halfway line. Right, their it's particular set of just field position again, we'll see. You know, Warrington are, well, Saints are starting their sets on the 30 and the 40. and. Warrington are finding it difficult to get into the 
we all talk about this arm wrestle, don't we, in rugby league, but it's all about field position, and because they're not carrying the ball quite as good, and Saints are defending well, and they haven't had a lot of ball, and their energy levels are down, all of these contributory factors lead you to get where we're at the morning now, Wilkin with a left-hand kick down this left-hand side, another great start. Well, their kicking game's excellent. They're not quite going to go out of play, which means that Stefan Ratchford's got a job to do, and he might have been preferring that the ball had gone out. So his teammates could get a bit of a rest. They're struggling to get behind the play the ball here, the Warrington line. And Joel Monaghan is one of the few that is, and he takes that pass with two tackles gone. And they're fixed up and darted out from Johnny Hall. That's um, an important little interjection provided by Bridge because he's, um, he's given a little bit of uh, momentum to Warrington. And now Riley's got all the backs here. Four tackles gone, and it's the outside backs who've led the charge they've had to. The big fellas struggling to get behind, and now it's taken off by one of the big men, Chris Hill, but that's tackle five, short of the half still, Nicky Hyman dummy half, scoops it left to Myler, Myler puts the kick down field, it's going to bounce betwixt and between the winger and the fullback, he's taken there by Mekinson, runs it back towards the 10 metre line, up towards the 20, good tackle, he's met there well on that occasion by Michael Monaghan, and St. Helens start on that 20 metre line, and maybe a little bit of a lift for Warrington, so they, can, they can see their opponents starting from deeper inside their own half. And it comes towards um, the man who's just arrived from the interchange bench. See a Soliola, Carl Amor, your mate's going off. And if you want one haircut for the other, see a Soliola's got a fab haircut. And, oh, yeah, oh I lost that one. Trying to do the same on the dry, on the flick, and a loose carry there. But he looks quick, doesn't he? Jordan Turner pulls himself between. He's trying to get rid of the ball. Hala, he's trying earlier to make him soon. Well, we've played 24 minutes, we talk about Roby, James Roby, who's um, the fittest man in Super League. Does he ever get tired? This is what he told us a little earlier. It all obviously depends on the game, I think. Obviously, when you, you've made a few tackles or you've took a few carries, you know, when you've got back-to-back -back efforts, your lungs are burning, you're tired, you might have a couple of bumps and bruises and things like that, and you, you tend to, I tend to feel it, you know, when I kind of kick chase, you know, and end of the set, you kind of kick it down, you kind of get a minute to relax your thoughts while you're running down the field, but you also kind of, uh, you know, you remind yourself of the other, you know, I'm knackered here. <laughs> forget the moment. But he, he that's how he'll be feeling just at the moment, James Ruby, but that's not stopping him making that tackle. As Hill comes, one of the biggest men in the Warrington line runs it through and Robbie's there, first man to make the tackle again. And Warrington had possession, ten minutes uh, ten meters inside that same Helen's line. Waterhouse now looking to try and make a break. Roy Asatati is uh, coming off for Warrington. He's done uh, the opening twenty five minutes, he's coming to be spelled on the sidelines. Monaghan uh, for Warrington. Uh, in fact, it's Mickey High on for Warrington. It's going to be tackled 20 metres out. It's um, a little step and a shuffle by Ben Curry. who's on the 10 metre line, but six tackles coming up. So Warrington looking to pass here. Michael Monaghan kicks to the right hand side. Joel Monaghan with the intended target. But the ball just floats out of play and flies away. And it will be a tap back on the 20%. Four end to a set for Warrington there. Michael Monaghan was desperately disappointed with that because it was a good lead up set and they needed to create a little bit more pressure than they did there, Warrington. He just kicked the ball out on the full, which gives the same side of 320 metres. See, has driven it in. Roby's still there, working hard. Throws it to his right, Willie Manu. Manu's going to be held up on that 40 metre line, just short. St. Helens looking ominous. 14 minutes of the first half remaining. Warrington 4, St. Helens 18 is the score line. And here's Roby again, inevitably. Touches the ball more than anybody. Runs off, scoops off this time, just tests the metal of that Warrington line. But they were ready for him this time. So he is going to be held up. Now it's Walsh in the middle of the park. Short pass. Trying to burst that Warrington line with a little teaser. But um, Wilkin can't quite get his head through. Walsh puts the kick on. Michael Monaghan gets a hand to it. Does very well, Michael Monaghan. He's just falling to the ground. He's then popped it up to Joel Monaghan. And there was knees in there from Sia Soliola. Joel Monaghan was tackled. And Sia Soliola came sliding in with his knees. And that is a, a, a very, a very easy penalty for, for Warrington to pick up. It's the first one they've had, isn't it? And we're, what, 30 minutes, nearly 30 minutes, 28 minutes into the game. That's Warrington's first penalty, I think. Is that right? You're the stat man. Well, I'm as close to a stat man as we're going to get with you tonight, because yeah. it's only me and you. <laughs> There's Craig, our silent partner, who's sitting to our right. Yeah, we well, can't. You can't. We know. No, I'm very worried about it, to be honest. Warrington, up to halfway. I am a dummy half. Michael Monaghan shows it and then half dance through the gap and then kicks it away. Tries the miracle pass to Joel Monaghan and Adam Swift will intercept it instead for St. Helens. 
plus a double whammy for me. That's the first time Warrington have had a couple of sets together in the same half, and Michael Monaghan with a poor kick and then a poor pass. It takes the pressure right off St. Helens. You look at that St. Helens back lineup. You know, the likes of Percival and Makinson and Swift and Lomax, of course. St. Helens lads who come through. They've used the dual system system well, haven't they, uh, the last few years? Swift was one of those who um, had a spell up at Whitehaven with our mate the other day, Woods up at Whitehaven. And They've got the experience and are ready now for the Super League Challenge. Here comes Wilkin. Running on hard. Five tackles gone. Left to Walsh. Walsh to Wheeler. Lomax joins in. Percival tries to burst through. Tries to urge his body towards the line. He's going to be held up short. It was the six. It's a handover. Warrington can get it back. A, a, a stride from their own goal line. This is Hill. Trying to push it forward. Warrington fans on the far side. Cries. Telling the referee that the St. Helens line was offside and maybe offering a little encouragement to their own team as well because they need it here. They need it here. And this is where the bench comes in. You were talking about the bench before, and Glenn Riley is on. But it is a young and relatively inexperienced bench for Warrington, isn't it? The big men, the big men who are going off, who are being sold, are the ones that maybe want to come on at this step. I'm telling the big blow to have gone on for St. Helens to give him a huge lift. See you, Soliola. Anthony Lefranchi. Josh Jones. They're finding it hard to get out of their own half here, Warrington. Well, they're only up to the 20 metre mark. And how many tackles is that? Four? Three or four? Uh, oh, there's another penalty. And the Frenchie is just um, interfering at the play of the ball. And it's another penalty for Warrington and Point. Did they need that, didn't they? They did need it. That's a stupid comment. They did need it. 11 minutes remaining in the first half. And it's Warrington. They have possession, 10 metres short of the halfway line. And a big drive forward again, this time by Riley, who's going to get up and play it. Michael Monaghan throws it to his right-hand side. 10 minutes of the first half remaining, Warrington 4, St. Helens 18. Jill Monaghan with a try for Warrington after two minutes, but it's been all St. Helens since. Super show by then. Tom Mekinson with a wonder try. James Roby dashing over. Kyle Amor just reaching over from close range as well. Warrington is struggling to get back in here. Ten minutes of half time. It's Warrington 4, St. Helens 18. And it's Wes Whitman is going to twist it round and pass around and he's tackled 20 metres away. A little bounce to the ball and Warrington are struggling to keep hold of it here. Although they've been allowed to keep hold of it, they've been allowed to carry on. Glenn Riley will take it forward and he's going to be... Um, He's going to be put down. Still only 20 metres out, that's all. Myler puts the kick up high. Joel Monaghan underneath it. And all he gets to it, a fingertips before it rolls out of play. And two kicks to his right hand side. One from Michael Monaghan, one from Richie Myler. Just not quite accurate enough. Well, practice will make perfect. It will get it better. But just that early indication of our talk at the top of the show, and that man Lee Breeze is not there, would normally. Nailed those. There's an early error from St. Helens that quarantine clearly needed. Well, we've got some tweets coming in from Neil, Co uh, Neil Coupland. says, enjoying the coverage. BBC Five Live Sports section with Dave Woods Sport. Has Coach Nobby shared out the wind-up? No. Is the answer? No. Not even revealed the wind-up. Never know. Hello, shared them out. I was going to bring you a fish. A bacon roll chip chop in Bradford. Would have been cold by the time you got here. No. Put it under the heater in the car. There's also werewolves. Nine minutes of the first half remaining. Warrington have prime position here. A chance to have a go. It's Chris Bridge who's tackled 15 yards away from where he wants to be. Now they go to the left hand side. Waterhouse carries it. The big Australian second row man. He's put down. Penalty for Warrington. St. Helens. I think offside there. So another six tackles because they take the tap and drive it in. Ben Evans. At Bradford last year, of course, the Welsh international. He's going to be held up very, very close to that St. Helens line. Boy, the Warrington needs something here at the moment. Trailing as they do by 18 points to four. Richie Myler takes it up to the line, throws it back. What a great pass. Joel Monaghan, even worse catch, rolls between his hands, through his legs. The referee says there wasn't a push forward, so they're allowed to keep possession at the very least. They lost a little face, but stayed possession. It's taken forward again by Glenn Riley. He's only a youngster, but he's a rugged-looking youngster. And now, Michael Monaghan, he's just jabbing his finger from the play-the-ball position. Oh, he runs into the big arm of Sia Soliola, who's absolutely whacked him. And I'm not sure that was legal. And I'm not sure the referee's sure oh, it was legal. 
And when we look at the video referee, we are now sure that it wasn't legal. Oh, oh dear. Spear Soliola has just swung with the arm at Michael Monaghan and smashed him in the jaw. And this is at the very least a penalty. This should be 10 minutes in the spin bin as well, shouldn't it? Oh. Well, Monaghan's up. Is he? Yes, well, he is. Monaghan's up. up. And they won't lie down unless they're hurt. But he needs to count his teeth. He didn't miss him, did he? Well, the only thing in defence of uh, Sia Soliola is that Michael Monaghan is not the tallest of players. And might have been he's smiling as well, Michael Monaghan. He's smiling. You know. He's in, I mean, it is in curve, isn't it? Sia Soliola has just smashed you in the teeth with his big arm. And he's up and he's smiling. Hookers, whether it was 1984 or 2014, they're all mad. They're all mad. Here comes Ben Westwood. Warrington has to give the penalty. Soliola gets away with nothing more than a brief word from the referee. But another set, set here. Monaghan's acted from Dudley Hart. Gets it away! Oh, my word! Chris Bridge was very close there. Monaghan again with a very swift pass. Bounces, forms it, tries to pick up. He's knocked on. The referee goes back. Oh, play on, play on. The referee goes back. I think he's given a penalty. He's given a penalty here for Warrington. He's given another penalty for Warrington because there was a St. Helens player offside at the last play of the ball. So Monaghan takes the tap and Warrington has the chance. Apologies for that. We, uh, we seem to have lost you very temporarily. He's not missed anything. It remains Warrington for St. Helens 18, but it is St. Helens who are trying to attack here. But they are going to be held up. And in fact, the tackle is a good one. Warrington's defence. Walter Haas with a terrific tackle five metres inside his own half. And St. Helens are put out of play, and Warrington hit the head of team five metres inside their own half. And the touch is just having a good look at that, and I think the legs of uh, Nathanson did just about touch the whitewash. It might have been his knee, actually, which is what, uh, why the head and feet is against St. Helens fans are not happy with that because they thought it was a second effort in the tackle there. Yeah, well, I think that's fair. You make that kind of effort as a defender. I think the more disappointing thing for Warrington, brilliant cover tackle by the way, let's give Chen Water out some credit, that's making to the spine down the sideline, let's not forget that he's got there as a big block. Oh, oh Ryan is caught high by John Wilson. And the referee, he's going to have a word with Warrington here, Warrington have a penalty here, it's been called, that was a nasty stop. But not so much nasty, I think he's off balance, wasn't he? I think, I think Riley kind of side steps away from him and he was just a grab more than anything. Uh, we know John Wilkin well, he's been doing those off balance tackles for a long time. He's testing dispersions. Here it comes, Warrington with that penalty. Five minutes of the first half remaining. Remember, we'll be hearing a very special Lee Breers interview at half time. Warrington fans, if you're listening, any, any fans of Rugby League, if you're listening, because his was a very special career. And we'll be hearing from Lee Breers at half time. And in the final half hour tonight, between the end of this game and the final half hour, we'll be hearing from the likes of Brian McDermott and uh, Josh Hodgson and Liam Finn, and uh, hopefully from the Warrington and St. Helens camp as well before we go off air. Here, Warrington with a dash and a dart. It's Monaghan. Michael Monaghan has taken play to 10 metres away from that line. Ben Curry is in the dummy half position again here. Right it comes, thrown back by Gareth O'Brien. Half break here by Westwood. Westwood's still going, he's a handful, but he is dealt with. Three St. Helens defenders make sure of that. Monaghan, Michael Monaghan, waits again, bends his back, flicks it back. O'Brien, little jab, jab kick into the ring goal area, taken well by Walsh. He read that superbly in the St. Helens scrum half, but all he can do is defuse it and put it behind it to drop out underneath the, underneath the stick. That's better pressure from Warrington. The last set was scruffy. I think the introduction of O'Brien here has helped their organisation and their structure. Monaghan going to nine has injected a little bit of pace and a little bit of football in there, and they look far more threatening on that set than they have done for any of the sets since that opening stanza when they got over the line. It's a really good game, isn't it? Really high quality game. St. Helens dominating for a period, but uh, Warrington, with all their pedigree, are managing to, uh, to fight back into it here. But they need a try. They'll need a try before the break. Ben Evans takes it forward. Three minutes before we hit half-time, by the way. Michael Monaghan wants it played quickly. Feels that the Frankie was holding down too long. Westwood in, arm free, tries the offload. St. Helens hand in there, knock it back to Frankie, picks it up eventually. The referee waves his arms in the air and says, play on. St. Helens have it back. That's, uh, that's Warrington's game. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And I just think the last three sets, four sets, errors on the back of Warrington towards the end, early in the set there. And 
It's giving they're hungry, St. Helens. They're picking up all the scraps, they're picking up all the fifty fifty, they look vigorous in defence. I have to say that the team in red and white look far hungrier. It's Josh Jones on that far right hand side. It is uh, met well by two Warrington defenders. Walter has the first of those. Roby again picks up blind side. Tort Turner, Jordan Turner, the right centre. Takes in another strider to forward. 35 metres out. St. Helens have it, but it is the sixth saddle coming up. So Walsh will send it steepling high just before three defenders get to him. It's Riley and Ratchford. They didn't know which one wanted it. Waterhouse drops on it from an offside position, surely. This is going to be a penalty for St. Helens. Well, Ratchford and Riley, I don't know if there was a shout there, but they both went for it. They both got out at the last minute and just rattled off both their shoulders. And the horse shouted yours. Well, it was a com comical, comical. Well, there's never been a kick too high in rugby league. That's for sure. And, um... That's Rashford's ball, he's coming from behind for me. He needs to dominate Riley in that situation. But they both went for it and they both bailed out of it. And one of them headed it to the other one. And Walsh out of the cleaning up. So it's going to be a pretty simple two points for Luke Walsh with the way he's kicking. Well, there's still a minute, two minutes left to play in the game. The clock has just stopped. Two minutes to play in this first half. It's a good decision here to go for goal. We're just coming to look at it again. Riley and Rashford. Neither of them planted their authority on that. Water has had to drop on it instinctively and gave the penalty away. Is this the right decision going for two? Or would, would you have... Well, they feel it's the right decision. Warriors have had a little bit of possession recently, haven't they? Well, Luke Walsh is the man who's going to take this. This, uh, this penalty kick, he's, uh, he's landed three out of three so far. He's looked pretty sure-footed, whether he's kicking from a tee like he is now, or whether he's been kicking from hand in open play, and nothing wrong with that one, over it goes, so it is four out of four, and it is now Warrington four, St. Helens 20, with a minute and a half of this first first half remaining. What a game we're watching here. It doesn't feel like a 20 points to four game though, does it? I understand what you're saying. I think St. Helens are clearly more clinical, clearly sharper defensively, but you, you all sneaky feel that Warrington should be a little bit closer. It's always reassuring when you give the scoreline and the, the summariser says you un he understands what you say. Well, I don't understand what you say, I'm just trying to please all our, our listeners. It's nice to have someone who can count. Here comes the kick, downfield again. St. Helens looking to get possession back again. Oh, it bobbles awkwardly. Dickinson picks it up eventually and offers it on. And I think this is Warmsley who's running it away. From his own goal line, up towards the 20. He's still going. He's, he's making yards, even on the floor. Warrington defenders being pushed back by him. He's a huge player. We saw a lot of him in the championship a couple of years ago, didn't we? Alex Warmson, I don't think you were surprised at the impact he made. You, you rated him very highly. Very highly. There are players down there, if you care to look, get them into a full-time system and get them a bit leaner and a bit sharper and a bit faster and then they're terrific Super League players. Really? And they have that element of hunger as well. Oh, Sears on the other trying to a pass to nothing and he's given it away and Warrington will get it back here. Yeah. Oh, will they? No. The referee has um, stopped it. Stopped the clock. 36 seconds to go, he's given Warrington head and feed. He's not given the advantage here because he said there were two knocks on, isn't he? So that's why Warrington weren't allowed to play on. Well, they've got 36 seconds to register a score here, Warrington. Little lad in the crowd looking uh, hopefully on with his Warrington bobble hat pulled down tightly over his head to keep him warm on a chilly, chilly night in Cheshire. Here's Ratchford running it back. He's being uh, watched all the while by Wheeler. And he's eventually wrestled to the ground. 30 metres out, 25 seconds of the first half remaining. Myler will put boots on it. Sends it steepling high. Lomax is back. And Joel Monaghan is up there. The huge man has knocked it back for Warrington. Westwood tries to pass it on. Give it away to Swift. If Swift gets away, he can try. But he isn't quite able to get away. Warrington defenders just about able to pounce on him. That could have been costly. And Luke Walsh looks at the scoreboard and says there's three seconds left to play. You know what? I'm going to keep the ball out of play. And that will end what has been a fascinating first half. Warrington 4, St. Helens 20. And Brian Noble, as entertaining as we hoped it would be. It's been breathless. Very few stoppages, very few penalties. Constant action. Both teams really testing each other. And Saints deserve their lead. They look a bit sharper at this moment in time. Well, the way the game has gone, two minutes, Joel Monaghan with a try, acres of space on the right-hand side, Warrington with an ominously good start, but St. Helens, once they found their feet, really have dominated. Tommy Makington with a terrific try after a wonder pass for Jordan Turner. That was in the 12th minute, 4-6, because Walsh kicked the goal. 
Jay's Roby darted over four minutes later, again Walsh converted, and Carl Amor three minutes after that, again the Walsh threw it, 18 points to four, it's the end of the try scoring, the second half of the first half hasn't produced any more tries, but Walsh with a penalty, 20 points to four, and, and who's really caught your eye in that first half? What about Luke Walsh, how, yeah. how much has he impressed you in yeah, that first half? definitely, half? kicking game's been everything we expected it to be, and he's organised the team, you can see there's a lot of and Wheeler to run and play their part and be threats. I think early on, I think you have to say that Kyle Amor has made a great impression. James Robey, as always, for St. Helens. Michael Monaghan at nine looks a bit more dangerous. Uh, I think both Myler and O'Brien now have to take a grip of this Warrington team and, and get them to the right part of the field. So that would be your message if you were in the Warrington dressing room here now. That would be your message if you were in Tony Smith's shoes at this stage. Well, it would be patient early but be a bit more structured and a bit more shape about your play because they're handling it too easy. You know, the quality of our, our last players are not good enough, so Warrington will be talking about the way they finish sets as well, so they need to build a little pressure against what is a good defensive outfit with St. Helens, so they're going to have to take some juice out of tank before they get any rewards on the fringes. So, half-time at the Halliwell Jones Stadium, it is Warrington 4, St. Helens 20. Well, it's too early to get too excited. No, let's get too excited. No, let's get excited. Let's get too excited. Yeah. Look, Walsh, of the evidence of what we've seen in the first 40, mi 40 minutes, St. Helens fans are going to be absolutely drooling. This is what they've been missing for a long time. Second half underway, by the way. No much gets a kick down field. It's uh, going to bounce. Warrington, uh, get it back. Myla offers it on, and here comes the first strike. But that first 40 minutes, St. Helens fans are, are going to be absolutely in raptures about what, the way their new scrum half has played out there. Yeah, and I think if we're, if, if we're all critical of it in any way, shape or form, of course, won't be tied me to be critical of anything, but they'll actually the question mark of who was pulling the strings at St. Helens, so it's quite clear now, who was he pulling the strings. Oh, there's a kick, which is charged down by Monaghan, and has given St. Helens position back again, and Wheeler runs away, but it's going to be tackled just right down, five yards short, just as the first half started with a St. Helens mistake, the second has started with a Warrington mistake, here comes, uh, comes James Roby is running in, five metres away. Soliola, the big man, bends his back, throws it a high one to Walsh. Walsh offers it back on the inside, and um, Walsh goes charging through. Oh, he's bouncing. He almost got all the way through. Bounced through defenders, but just held up on the line, Morris. Roby with a short one. Here comes the, the tough drive. Look, Frankie, I think he's over here. Or is he held up? The referee has a look. I think he might get this. No, he's not. No, he's not. He's going to ask for the video replay. Right at the start of this second half, LaFranchi is nodding his head. He thinks he's got it. We can't see from here, but let's have a look at the video replay, Brian Noble. I think he's got it. Oh, your, your eyesight's good. Well, having a look here, that's just the body language, isn't it? He certainly looks good, uh, didn't he? Well, we're having a look at it again here. Uh, LaFranchi driving it in. There were a couple of Warrington players there. And the close-up now will tell us whether he's actually managed to touch it down. The St. Helens fans again who are watching that big screen from a closer distance than what we're watching it from are, are cheering, but then they would, wouldn't they? Uh, but we've not seen an angle yet, or does that angle tell us that the Frankie has touched the, the ball down? Well, we're having a look at it, and I think that suggests he has touched it down, doesn't it? No, not so sure. Well, I can't see that far. I think it was in the time, but... I'll go down body language. Here we go, decision time. Try given. Antino LaFranchi gets it. And the Halliwell Jones Stadium, three quarters is silent. The St. Helens fans are up, arms in the air, cheering and celebrating. It's back to what they always used to do best against Warrington on big nights like this. They're winning at a canter. Not in the last few years, not quite with the same expectancy, but tonight they've come here and they are hitting Warrington for six just at the moment. 90 seconds of the second half played, 24-4 with a kick to come. I'm afraid it's the kicking game again. I think Warrington's kicking game, and we were talking about Lee Breers, and he's gone now, so they have to find a solution, but it's been at best, not the best. Well, Walsh was never going to miss that, right in front of the sticks. He just um, loops it over, so four points now for Warrington, 26 for St. Helens. What you spotted here? Somebody's been limping off to the tunnel and he will play it further far. I think, is it, is it Curry? Ewan Curry? Another Curry O'Reilly, isn't he? Just disappeared um, underneath underneath us. So, it's a Warrington player anyway. One of the young players from the bench. So that's going to help them. 
Because if they lose an interchange, four for Warrington, 26 for St. Helens. It's uh, St. Helens who have possession back again here. Uh, Gordon Burns has tweeted, great first half from Saints, 18-19. New Aussie star Luke Walsh making big difference to Saints. Shades of Sean Moore. That's a compliment from a Saints fan, isn't it? If Gordon Burns is a Saints fan. I mean, it's the Gordon Burns. Krypton Factor. I think it is, actually. The Gordon Burns of Krypton Factor. North West tonight. Welcome along, Gordon. Here, St. Helens. In possession. Five metres short of the halfway line. Roby. A dummy half. Wilkin. Running in at the angle. Brushes off a couple of defenders. Then offloads it. Josh Jones has it. As Atazi has uh, come on, by the way, it was Glenn Riley who has um, helped off the us. And Asatasi is the man who's come on. Roby looks left and Soliola driving it forward again. Picks himself up. Roby again now. This is Walsh. Looks one way. Throws it back the other. Josh Jones is the man who receives it. One of those no-look passes. But it was a, a good look a catch from Jones's point of view. Walsh now throws it to the right-hand side. This is Lomax. His ankle's grabbed a hold of by Richie Myler. That's the fifth tackle in this set. And St. Helens find themselves... 18 yards away from that Warrington line. So Walsh again, his boot, just sends it spinning and toppling up in the air. Joel Monaghan was underneath it, the ball's gone to ground, it's picked up by Stefan Ratchford eventually, and he falls in the field of play. So Warrington, well, they're not going to start from there. It was a knock-on, I think, from St. Helens, and as that was the sixth, it's going to be a handover on the 10-metre line. I thought they had a case for a penalty as well, Warrington. I think one of the Saints players just bowled. I think it's Michael Monaghan out of the way. Four minutes for the second half play. Warrington 4, St. Helens 26. And it's Warrington who are looking to make progress slowly from inside their own half at the moment, trying to push them forward. They had that electric start, didn't they? Something we've, we've come to get used to from Warrington. That electric, pulsating start to a game. But St. Helens have found their measure since as Westwood burst his way into that line, but it's uh, no more than 10 metres short of the halfway line. Monaghan with a little dummy, he had bridge to his right, dummy and then tried to go. Jumps at the tackle, tackle, five, tackle's gone. Myler on the six, with a kick, eye in the air. Who's underneath this? Tommy making some for St. Helens, that's who, the winger. Catches it safely enough, there's a pocket of Warrington defenders around him, so he's not going far, but that doesn't matter, he's got the ball back. It's just nothing kicked, though, aren't there? Does that make sense? I'm not being really really disrespectful, yeah. if you have there is no pressure on the Saints back line at all in the relation to the catch. Whereas St. Helens through Walsh are causing problems every time they put the ball up, aren't they? This big blow is causing some problems for Ormsley. I think he's found a shirt to pick this year. Oh, no, he's forced problems to his own side here because he, he got it. up and he tried to play the ball and the referee says he knocked it off. So. He didn't knock that off. You know what he did? He just stood over it and touched it and it looked grubby. But the referee thought he knocked on. I don't think he knocked it on. But I'm not a referee. Yeah. Such a big fella, Alex Walter. Last season, he always seemed to be pulling his shirt down and pulling his shorts up. They didn't seem to have shirt and shorts that fit him properly. Sean Long is here, by the way. Talk about shades of Sean Long. That is Sean Long, isn't it? That we're seeing there in the distance. Six foot five, by the way, Alex Walter. Sean Long is not six foot five. No, Alex Walter. There were some rumours about Sean Long, but he's gone on Twitter to say there's nothing wrong with him. He's fine. There were one or two rumours circulating, but he's uh, he's uh, bottom then out and says there's nothing wrong. London coach these days, of course, if you're watching this, ahead of um, St. Helens and Warrington taking trips to the capital. It's Warrington who are looking to push forward here through Ben Evans, the, uh, the young Welsh prop who's uh, taken in the strider too, but he's taken back a strider too. And Michael Monaghan just a little frustrated because he wanted to get on a bit quicker than the referee was allowing. Here's Myla. Myla tries to cut his way through. But St. Helens defenders have his measure and tackled it 15 metres away. Michael Monaghan at Dunny Hart. Back to the middle he comes again now. Here's James Lakewood. So another of the youngsters. Five metres out. Monaghan scoops it up high. It's a kick from O'Brien to that in goal area or in for the in goal area, but it's, uh, it's caught safely enough by a St. Helens player. I think it was Jones, not sure, but anyway, they have got it back and uh, they can bring it away here, St. Helens. A good spell of pressure, well not a good spell of pressure, but a spell of pressure that has been dealt with by St. Helens well enough. Amor, in, twisting, wanting to offload, can't do so. He started at Leeds, didn't he, Carl Amor? Went to Wakefield and... Cumbrian boy. Yeah. Shot by the haircut is a Cumbrian boy. Yeah. No shoot cheering where he's coming from, given the, uh, the hairstyle and the beard style, which we mentioned in the first half. 
I wanna. It's <laughs> what you're doing there is stereotyping. Cumbrian well, farmers. Quite the opposite there. Well, I'm not stereotyping at all. Quite the opposite there in terms of her suitness from uh, Luke Walsh. Not a hair on his head as he kicks it downfield. And it's, uh, it's caught by Ratchet. You're trying to get me into trouble here, aren't you? No, you're trying to get me into trouble. I just said it had a great haircut. And you say he looks like a tramp and he she sheeps. She is sheep. I've got to say it. Forward goes Lakeway for Warrington. 35 metres away from his own line. It's that arm wrestle stage of the game here just at the moment, isn't it? It's Westwood. If you want a man in an arm wrestle, he's your fella. He's put some shifts in in the last uh, couple of years, hasn't he? For a Saints for a team that are traditionally flamboyant and like to play football around, I just I think the defence has been great tonight. There. They're belting balls, don't they? Nick and Brown's key this year, would you say? Maybe not enough time last year to stamp his authority and bring the players in he wanted, but although he was, even though he was at Huddersfield, he was kind of actively involved in the incomings of St Helens, but would you say this is, this is more his team this year than it was last year? 26-4, he'll say that. Definitely. And I, and I understand what you're saying about the stamp he puts on teams and, and what he expects of teams. They're running hard in the middle. They've got some big blokes. That helps. You win the ground and it enables Luke Walsh to kick off the front foot and release the outside backs like he wants to do. It's making some. Well, last year, of course, he started with a, a half-back pairing of Lomax and Gaskell, seven and six. Lomaskell, they were branded because they seem to be set for a certain future together. Didn't quite work, did it? Lomax has gone to full-back and Gaskell has, uh, has gone. Um, and now he's brought in Luke Walsh to play a lot of last season with John Wilkin in that half-back's role, which was, um, from everybody's point of view, at St. Helens, far from perfect. Here it goes, left again. St. Helens trying to make progress. Percival on that left-hand side. 40 metres away from the Warrington line. Warrington 4, St. Helens 26 in the score line. Little kick over the top. It's, um, it's chased back. Ooh. There's a high from Lomax. Have you connected? Well, it was, but he was falling, wasn't it? Yeah. Ben Evans. Is it Ben Evans? I think so, yeah. In the middle. Lakeway could have actually. Down the middle, whoever. He was, uh, he was falling over. Here's Asasasi. Boy, is his experience required now from Warrington's perspective. Ten minutes of the second half play. Monaghan again at dummy half. Evans with the offload. Lyle is there to collect it. Runs at Amor. Then jogs to that right hand side. Can't find a way through. Can't create anything. Not on that occasion. Monaghan. Michael Monaghan. Offers it out. O'Brien with the dummy. Tries to skip. He, um, he had a spell at St. Helens, didn't he, last year, O'Brien? On loan from Warrington. In that problem esque half back role. Lyle gets a kick away before the tackle comes in. Making some underneath it. And again, Brian Noble just shoulders arms as if to say, easy catch. And again, one of your nothing kicks there, wasn't it? Well, I'm not being critical. I'm just saying it's not helping Warrington. You should put the kick, kick the ball with a view to getting it back in my mind. And they've got some ball here on a one-on-one -on -one steal. It's back to zero for St. Helens. So there's just been, hasn't been any pressure created from any of the Warrington. And that's not me. People say, oh, you're all right saying that and this, that and the other. But that's my opinion. And, and I think it's the opinion of everybody else. There's Rovich, Hansel Walsh, who's um, set to behind the 40 metre line by a long distance when he lets that fly, but the bounce actually to be jacked it back to Ratchford. That could have been another supreme 40 20. And um, Sir, there might be in trouble here because as he ran forward to catch Ratchford, he has caught him. He's caught him high, and it'll be a penalty for Warrington 20 metres there. That was, that was a, a bounce away from being another spectacular kick from Walsh, though, wasn't it? And you know, every time we've mentioned that high, turn of tackle is high, that's three high shots they got away with saying, one I got away with, not being penalised, but no further action other than maybe the video review panel. But every time St Helens have kicked the ball, there's been a little bit of tension in the Warrington team, hasn't there, because of the, either the chase or the quality of the kick. And, and when they've kicked for metres and yardage, there's not been any blue shirts in the backfield, which is a great indication that Luke Walsh is picking his moments. Rothero's tweeting. Thanks, looking good. Again, you can be having a genius to spot that. They're not looking very good. And Warrior Monkey 18 has tweeted, do you think that the World Cup Challenge should be played at, at the end of the year? Surely Tonkins, Richards, etc. deserve to play anyway. That segment is off topic. But I wonder if that's the real Warrior Monkey 18. Anyway, maybe we'll return to that at the end of the game, in the final half hour of the programme, when we do all our chatting about matters at Rugby League. Here comes Walsh. Walsh left again now. St. Helens moving ominously. And it goes to that far side and Swift. Swift steps in, rounds one man, almost rounds another. It's going to be tackled down. Boy, did he look good on that little run. And he's tackled ten metres away. 
far left hand side, back to the middle again, Walsh now, with a pass to Amor, Amor hits that ball, hits the pass hard, so the Warrington defence is waiting for him and they put him down hard, Roby off from dummy half, oh he just stumbled as he went forward and Wilkin now collects that pass and Wilkin throws it to the left again and Wheeler steps back in the inside, Wilkin's there once more, gets the offload away, the Frankie reaching, he's lost the ball, the ball's knocked on, Warrington come up with it, the referee says penalty for St Helens. So the knock on by the Frenchie, but another penalty for St. Helens five metres out. They are punishing Warrington here, aren't they? Certainly are, and they're trying to turn the screw with plenty on the tap of Maymore. He's taken it quickly, driven it in. Roby connects. Back it goes to Walsh. Walsh throws the pass back again. Wheeler with a dive. Oh, he grabbed a hold up by Waterhouse. Well, it's given high. I thought that was um, around the chest, but it is given as high. And it will be a... Um, a penalty again for St. Helens. Just to confirm that Glenn, Glenn Riley has been taken us to the dressing room for treatment. Here comes the tap for St. Helens. Roby has taken the instructions of the referee as to where it should be taken from. And then taps it and plays it to Josh Jones. And Jones trying to push his way forward. Three Warrington defenders right on that Warrington line. Another try here. And that might just be it for the night. Because St. Helens are looking good, but the pass has gone backwards and Atkins is first there. And Ryan Atkins has not only picked it up, but he's looking to get in his stride again. He just had his ankles grabbed a hold of by Luke Walsh. But St. Helens from the start suddenly having to defend. And now, holding down from Jordan Turner has given Warrington a penalty. And we'll talk about a game switching in the blink of an eye. They were defending on their own line. Suddenly Warrington now will have a tap. Restart, 10 metres inside the department as well. It was just on that rare occasion that Saints haven't executed a play properly. They threw the ball to the ground. Atkins picked up the spoils and went 20 metres and won his team a penalty. So now Warrington in the, in the attack. Warrington looking forward. Asatati driving it in. Martin Gleeson, one of uh, Brian Salter players, of course, saying that Walsh pulling strings for Saints like my old mate Bjorn Longy used to do. Giving the team confidence and control. Getting us long wig and tape, he says. Out it goes to that right hand side as Warrington looks to attack again. 15 metres from the St. Helens line. If they can get a try back, it's suddenly game on. This is Bridge, running back to the middle, looking for the runners who are coming on. But he wants to take them on himself and almost does a very good job of that. The St. Helens through Kyle Amor, hang on, wrestling down. It's um, Payam from Demi Hoff, out to Westwood, Westwood goes charging at the line. St. Helens player, defenders bravely, putting themselves in front of him, Roby was one of those. Warrington try and duck and dart underneath, that was the six, it's a waste. Mickey Hyam tried to go from Demi Hoff, couldn't get through that tangle of St. Helens legs, and it's the handover for St. Helens on their own line again. Brian Noble. Saints desperately hanging on there, and that's again an element of their hunger and their desire. Probably not the best play from Mickey Hyam on last turn. The way the finish sets Warrington have given Saints every opportunity to survive in this game, and they're not only survive, they thrive, haven't they? They're 26-4 open. That gives you the extra leg when you're trying to close the game out, which they are, but neither team will, will die wondering. They're both with football teams. 25 minutes left to play, 22 points to difference. Warrington Paul, St. Helens 26, but it's Saints here who are ranging forward again. Lomax has run to the 30 metre line, inside his own half, and the Saints fall back once to get up and play it quickly. LaFranchi now, running onto it again here. Uh, sorry, McCarthy Scarsbrook, I should say, running onto it. He's tackled, 10 metres out. Left it goes to Walsh. Walsh out to Wilkin. Wilkin, long pass. Well, it's not to this from Jeff Wilkin. And Adam Swift, the young man, is the, uh, the older St. Helens player. A bit of a glare, as I suppose the catch that. He's had a play on the full and wanted to get the handover. Yeah, it would have been a tough catch. And a good pass from John Wilkins at the touch of But that's a couple of bits of execution since that they're comfortably in front and they're chanting their arm now. An execution on the right side that went wrong that allowed Warrington back into their half and now on their left side. It's the only way that Warrington are finding field position, really. Here's Mickey Hyam. Back on and um, out of Dunny Half. It's Westwood again. Westwood again, just looking to offload it and man desperate to hang on to it because there were three St. Helens players around him. So it made it a very difficult pass. Hyam runs out. Uh, left it comes to Myler. Myler sees the St. Helens line is advanced. So didn't try to pass, tried to run instead. Steps off the left foot. And he's snappled up by Josh Jones. And let's wait down the middle. This now is Hill with the, the black head guard on, pushing forward. Held up 15 metres away. Warrington desperate. Hyam runs off again from dummy half. Captured by a couple of St. Helens defenders. One of them Walsh. The other one's Manor. 
Now it's Myler. Myler with a kick to the corner. It's going to be a leap by Monaghan. Joel Monaghan, but he can't connect it. There's a real collision of bodies there. Monaghan knocks on. It looks as though Stace has knocked on. The referee says play on. Wilkie picks it up and runs it 15 metres out. That was kicking for Monaghan. That was a pressure kick, but they cleaned it up St Helens quite well because Monaghan got his hands to the ball, knocked it back, and there wasn't another blue shirt in the frame. There's a white shirt that picked it up. Kyle Amor with that, uh, that tress of hair. Blowing in the wind as he runs it forward again. 35 metres out from his own line. Robe is going to have a go, but Lathwaite grabs a hold of him. James Lathwaite pulls him down by the shoulders, puts him on his backside. Robey gets up and plays it. Now it comes to Walsh again. Walsh on the inside to Willie Manu. Manu scrambles away from three defenders. Finds another willing defender in there in the shape of Richie Minor, who hauls him down just inside the Warrington half. Walsh again, offers it on the inside to McCarthy, Scarsbrook has made a half a break, Lomax is there in support but he's stumbling as he got it, which made him an easier tackle for, for Hill to make, Chris Hill to make, but Saints are only about 15 metres away, they try to force it, Jordan Turner has put off one miracle pass, but he's just tried one too many, it rattles against the legs of Tom Nakinson, and out for Warrington Tennant feet at the side. Well, the Saints are looking slick, aren't they? They're kicking the ball well, they're, they're getting to their points really well in the field and then troubling Warrington they won't quit play the ball in that set there low match pushed on McCarthy Scarsbrook and a half a break and they're nearly flooding through they look very dangerous don't talk about flooding too much uh, because um, that cup of coffee at half time on a chilly night suddenly you think I'm not sure that was sensible really oh I thought you were talking about all the floods well, that we're yeah. having in the country yeah there are lots of floods that people are, are suffering at the moment as well it's another reason not to talk about flooding here comes and Atkins for Warrington. 20 metres away from his own line. Asatasi trying to stiffen things up and strengthen things up. The longer this game goes on, the, uh, the better odds on St. Helens power into victory here. 26 points to four. Just a one try in this second half, but it's been a decent watch, hasn't it, in this second period. Here's Westwood. St. Helens defenders coming to it. Higher. Which is though he might have been shaping to kick, but he gets the pass on instead to O'Brien, and O'Brien does get the kick away, but Lomax has it covered. Wearing the number one shirt, no doubts about his position this season. Runs it back towards the 20. Ducks and darts. Warrington players are quickly up there to make the tackle a good one. So St. Helens through Swift, and then back to the middle again, and uh, half a break made by Nakinson, but no further than half, and Swift gets it on, it looks a suspiciously forward pass to Wilkinson, more than a suspicion, it's a confirmed fact, because the referee says it is a knock on, it's Warrington's head and feet just on the halfway line. What about the referee's kit, by the way? I wish he wouldn't have asked me that one, really. It's shocking pink. Is that the right colour? Well, it is shocking, and it is pink, so yeah. Oh yeah, I got that right, didn't I? It, it looks like they've mixed it, the red kits and the white kits in the watch. I wonder if they have a major in the rugby league and thing. How ridiculous can we make them all this year? Why don't we just do a spotted uniform, a leopard uniform or something like that, or a cheater, or a... a rats are cheaters. Well, yeah, I must get in touch with you. Well, I think pink's the in colour, isn't it? I've got to get in touch, haven't I? Yeah. Get a bit of the fashionable side, the younger side of things. Here, it's Warrington. I'm going to ring Gok Wan, see what he thinks of Looking to make progress. Down that right hand side with Asatasi with a soft hand as he hits the line and gets it away. And um, Bridge is tackled, but only 15 metres out. Warrington looking good here. Attacking this St. Helens line. They need something soon. Asatasi trumbling forward again. Within 8 metres now. Mickey Hyam, left O'Brien. Back it goes to Myler. Myler from deep puts a little kick towards the corner. He's not got the legs for Riley. It would have been a good idea, but making some caught it easily enough. And I think if Richie Myler does join us at the end of the game, he's, um, he's thinking about coming up and joining us after this match tonight to have a chat. I think we might ask him about the kicking game. I don't think he'd be happy about this kicking game, will he, tonight? That was another poor one, really, wasn't it? Here's Josh Jones. Good pick up on the bounce by Percival on that far side. 30 metres away from his own line. I think Warrington have been a whole lot better in the second half. I think we'd be agreed. You know, the, the one early score from Saints is the difference in this half. But there's still the execution of their kicks and that's the early season kind of performance we were talking about you know if it wasn't going to do with the weather the quality of execution on kicks etc can be the difference between teams that's a kick by Wilkin which is uh, caught on his own goal line by Stefan Ratchford and he runs it back towards the 20 
and he's going to be tackled there. They, I mean, they've got some really useful forwards to come back. Masso, as we mentioned. Is it Richard Beaumont as well? They've signed from Hawkinson Rovers. He's had an injury play for years, hasn't he? But big, uh, big potential from him. Is that a knock on from Hyatt? It wasn't because um, McCarthy Scarsbrook was in the way, so a penalty for Warrington on their 30 metre mark. And Mark Flanagan as well, who's um, on dual reg at, um, at Rochdale at the moment to get himself back fit again. Bumped into him earlier today, actually. He's, um, I don't think he's over looking forward to playing against Sheffield on Sunday because they, they've got some big fellas playing for them as well, haven't they? Here, Warrington, 40 metres away from that St. Helens try line. High on from Dunning Half. Waterhouse, just a one try in the second half. It's gone St. Helens' way. And they lead here, 26 points to four, but Warrington desperate to get themselves back in the contest. Ratchman running around at the back of a cluster of players and then straightens up. And he's tackled 30 metres from that St. Helens line. Hyam, dummies, scoots forward, takes it to the line, sees the gap, punches his way through. Good recovery from the St. Helens defence. Lomax, the leading light there to make sure he isn't tackled. Atkins tries a miracle pass, give it away. Josh Jones picks it up and St. Helens survives the scare and has possession and now Walsh has not knocked on, he has lost it, but Richie Myler just uh, playing at that ball from an offside position, knocking it out of his hands, St. Helens have a penalty. So a chance there for Warrington. Well, that's Richie being on Mickey Iron's shoulder, he made a clean break and was a try all over it, and then Atkins overplays a little bit on the next play and released the pressure valve that was on St. Helens, but you have to say that Warrington have looked a whole lot more threatening in the second half, haven't they? They have. They lost at home to St. Helens last year and still made a grand final. And Wigan lost at home to Huddersfield last year and still won the double. But um, I don't think Wigan and Warrington are going to feel any more comfortable this year as a result of those two facts. It's been um, a tough start to the new season for the Warrington Wolves. It has been very pleasurable from St. Helens' point of view. Warrington 4, St. Helens 26. 16 minutes still remaining. So it is still a game to be won and lost. As uh, Josh Jones comes on short from the, uh, the pass of Roby, who's still out there, by the way, James Roby. He's expected to be still the engine purring in the middle of the field at the heart of um, a lot of things for St. Helens. So he's getting a little bit of treatment at the moment. He, he got a bit of a bang off the ball a short while ago. Sia Soliola running it in there, 20 metres away. Five tackles gone. Here comes the last. Oh, it's, it's a reverse kick from Luke Walsh. He can do those as well. It's um, taken very well in the air by O'Brien, I think that was, but not a bad effort by Walsh. He stumped his authority right throughout the game, hasn't he, Luke Walsh? Warrington looking to clear their lines. Ratchford. Here's Hill. Hill driving it forward. Two St. Helens defenders dancing him back, lifting him up and pushing him back. Ratchford now from Delhi Half. Stumbles and slips. So Jones tackles him easily enough, a yard away from where he started. Westwood now, battering round with an effort by him, but Sia Somigola was in front of him, a big, big oak wooden door that was not going to give. Here's Myler with a kick downfield. 14 and a half minutes remaining, Warrington 4, St. Helens 26, just the one try in the second half. The Frankie the try scorer, an arm wrestle still, but St. Helens very much in the ascendancy. Warrington 4, St. Helens 26. And here comes Willie Manning, just joined by our colleagues on Radio 5 Live, by the way, just giving them an update, which is uh, when we suddenly burst into match reporting style. Here comes Roby talking about bursting. Roby, burst through one tackle, looks on the inside. Lomax is there to follow up. Lots of defenders, but Lomax spins it away. Roby takes a pass again. Good recovery from Ratchford to make the tackle. St. Helens want to play quickly. And do. Walsh sees there's an overlap, throws it to that left hand side. Wheeler's going to be caught in possession. Warrington defenders swarming around him again. Great scramble defence from Warrington. Are they back in control yet? Roby doing what Roby does. Have you dropped the ball? He has. Wheeler's lost it. Not caught. So what a lift that is for Warrington. Well, it is, but the danger signs are there. Soliola's giving them a boost. I always thought their bench would make a difference. Enabled. James Roberts had run out of dummy half and had Lomax in support. The good fullback should be. Just couldn't quite finish the play. And you have to give credit to Warrington as well. Terrific scramble defence. 13 minutes left to play. It's on. That's James Roberts. We've just seen a, a repeat on the screen. Gosh, he's a good player, isn't he? Outstanding. And that is what? 
after 67 minutes of effort. Not a fresh pair of legs, a lot of um, what is of course swap and change in the modern game these days, the last few years, but Roby remains the absolute king of his position in the British game anyway. Lakeway off lows. It's um, Benny Westwood now, Paul Warrington. Stumbles into a tackle, twists away from two. Sully Overton's at him, he crosses him off. If anything, I think he was Essex Harvey who tripped his own man up there to stop Westwood's run. From touch of the shoes. As the Tarsi gets to pass away, cheers from the Saints fans. Every time a tackle is a good one. Warrington struggling to make progress downfield. Short of the halfway line at the moment. Hill now, barreling it forward again. He's a big, big effort man. And has taken Warrington inside their opponent's half by a stride or two. Back it comes to O'Brien. Let's the boot fly. It's certainly a deep kick. Oh, it's hit the upright. It's hit the upright. O'Brien picks it up, throws it out to the right. And Joel Monaghan will score the freakiest try you will ever see. O'Brien with a kick. Hit the upright, fooled everyone. Far the man who booted it in the first place. And once he taken it for a second time, it was simply a case of finding the pass. And Monaghan scores from there. Well, a great kick of the night. Because it was the highest kick and it was moving. O'Brien leathers the ball. It goes high as you can imagine. There's never been a kick too high. And it's moving all over the place. The fact that it hits the ball is a bonus because Monaghan picks it up. Brian picks it up, sorry, and releases Monaghan. But the ball was moving all over the place. Lord Max wasn't within five inches of that kick. So that's why it's been their best kick of the night. And they get the result on the back of, you'd have to say, a freakish bounce off the ball. So I can't Brian will tell you he's aiming for it. And there might be elements of truth of that in there. It's all day. All day. He's a half back. It's a, but the thing about the kick well, it was high and it was suspended and it was moving. And it's given the opposition, well, Lomax, the opportunity but not the chance to feel the ball. It's moving all over the shot. And Warrington the opportunity to chase the ball properly. Well, if Brian has started it, has a chance to finish it in terms of this particular scoring sequence because a kick here. Two points desperately needed by Warrington to add to the four they've already got, but he has put it wide, so it remains eight for Warrington, 26 for St. Helens. It's an 18-point gap, it's a three-score gap, ten and a half minutes to play. It's um, a tough question to say, is there time for them to bridge this gap? Because of course there is, the, the, the more uh, perhaps likely question is, can they bridge this gap? Will they bridge this gap? Well, the way the big game's been going, it's been pretty even Stevens this second half, hasn't it? It's been a really close game, and the scoreline reflects that as well. So, I'm not sure in 10 minutes they can do what Saints did to them in, in the first 20, 30 minutes. Well, Saints, to remind you, um, 12 minutes their first try, 19 their third try. So, they've shown tonight that three tries in a seven-minute period is possible. And Warrington need exactly that now, and a little bit more, if they're going to win it. They need three tries, three goals to get themselves level. There is time. Is there the will? Is there the wherewithal? Here comes Ratchford for Warrington. Up to that St. Helens line. Mickey Hyam at dummy half. Out he goes again. Little scoot and a scamper. The St. Helens defence is, um, is rigid enough inside their opponent's half. Mylan out. Inside for Luke Lakeweight. Lakeweight pushing forward again. Five short of the halfway line. Up and plays it. Hyam to Hill. Hill. Little dummy shown by him, and then the flick, and it's actually headed, headed by Fitch, and then collected uh, off the floor, off the bounce. And um, he goes it back again, and Warrington looking towards that right hand side of Monaghan, who's caught by Swift, and Monaghan spun down, but he's up quickly to play the ball. Here's another kick, it's certainly another high one, but it's a bit too long. But Mickinson collects it and sees a bit of a gap to run into, and then swerves, and Riley will make the tackle. And St. Helens will look to, uh, to make this a clean set of six, won't they? Oh, well, having said that, Jordan Turner's just knocked off. Well, little moments like that give their opponents hope. Warrington head and feed 15 metres out. Maybe this is a, a position Warrington can still salvage here. Well, if they're scoring this set, then, then they're a chance. But I do think what Saints have been a better team all night there, but they'll close this game out. I'm sure of that from here, but it's a great opportunity for Warrington. We're hearing, by the way, that Glenn, Glenn Riley has a knee, his knee in a brace at the moment, so I'm sure they'd have done that as some kind of a precaution anyway. But um, he'd be disappointed that his night ended in such a manner. Here comes Atkins for Warrington, uh, just up towards the 10 metre mark, where he's tackled. Warrington needs a score here. Just under nine minutes left to play. Hyam picks, 
scoops to his left hand side. Myers into the line as well. Late weight takes the pass. Just bubble forward. St. Helens defenders muscular enough to deal with that. Manu and Walsh on that occasion. Here comes Ham again. Hill, quick interchange with him. Riley goes to Myler again. Myler along the line. Atkins steps, jumps, tries to get the pass away. Hits Swift, passes back into the hands of Wheeler. St. Helens have it back again. And it's an opportunity lost for the Warrington Wolves. Well, a little bit of overplay. They do chance to arm Warrington. And you quite rightly said they'll grow and they'll get better and more slick in their execution. Well, that's been the difference now. In sense of had opportunities, they've probably executed a little bit better than Warrington. St. Helens moving up towards the 20 metre mark. It's um, a chance now for St. Helens to move it to his right hand side. And it comes, and suddenly there's a bit of pace here. All Bakinson just for his ankles tap, and he's still going. It takes on Ratchford. Ratchford makes the tackle. Joel Monaghan is there to complete the tackle. And St. Helens are halted, only 25 yards out. Big throw to that left hand side. It's now in the hands of Lomax. Lomax. They've got an overlap, developing here. Now it's picked up by Percival. Percival goes for the line, gets the pass away, and Adam Swift scores the try. That makes absolutely sure it is going to be St. Helens' night. They played with plenty of pomp and plenty of purpose, and they're going to come away from the Halliwell Jones Stadium with a first win of the season. What a performance by St. Helens. Yeah, it's been a good performance. A great executor on the back of one wingers break, right across to the other. So Makerton gets downfield, and then... They shift the ball through the hands. Johnny Lomax throws the ball on the four, which is picked up by John Wilkin, who releases John Swift. And a bit of debate on the ground, I think. Well, they're having a look at this. I think it might have gone to the video referee, but um, having seen the replay, it seems pretty certain that it is going to be a try. Decision time is shown in the big screen. They only had one look. It tends to suggest they think it is a score. It is a try. It is 30 points to St. Helens and eight for Warrington. It has been emphatic from St. Helens tonight in the way they've handled this game. Uh, they've executed well at the right times, and this is a shift from one side of the field to the other on a break. Nakinson makes a break down one side. Lomax actually throws the ball on the floor, but Johnny Wilkins picks it up and releases Adam Swift to finish in the corner. And there's Warrington defence just a little bit too tired to try and scramble and make the double effort that they've had to. Down one side and down the other. Well done, Saints. Well, they've got the kick right from the far touchline. We're just watching in the big screen that try again from Adam Swift. The St. Helens fans are uh, taunting the Warrington supporters. How concerned should Warrington be here? Is it eminently fixable? Yeah, of course it is. It's the first game of the season, and we're all a bit carried away. And we'll all write headlines, and we'll all say who's doing what. When you're six, seven, eight, nine, ten rounds, then you probably get a clearer picture of who's doing what to who. And I think you said it last year. Did Warrington lose their first one last year? Well, they lost to St. Helens last year, certainly. Here's Swift from the touchline. As he goes, Walsh rather from the touchline. As he called it in, yes, he has. So eight points to Warrington, 32 for St. Helens. And uh, Luke Walsh has had a terrific game here tonight. He's certainly adding an awful lot to this St. Helens lineup. And I'm sure St. fans are looking forward to seeing him for the rest of this season. They lost their last uh, their opening game last year, didn't they, against Huddersfield. And all the talk was about what's going wrong at St. Helens. And uh, in the final reckoning, we, we suddenly realised it was actually what was going right at Huddersfield last year. But such a different, different mood of optimism from St. Helens for their opening game tonight. Six minutes left to play. And the St. Helens fans are looking for more here. And Halliwell Jones is, uh, is emptying quickly here. Uh, Martin Sadler saying he's a little walks the best time in Super League this year, early to say, but tonight suggests he might well be. Well, again, back to your point, I think, when well, we've had 28 rounds, I think it's he's the best signing of the season has been. But he's certainly impressed, he's impressed you tonight, Brian Noble. Most definitely, I think. There's been a lot of structure and organisation, and the right decisions to be made. Clearly, the, the petit general of this team, isn't he? The little general, he's throwing around the field and allowing people like Lomax and Wheeler and Roby to have their running game but you know what they've also been complimented with people who want to carry the ball you know we see Jones there but Solly Ola the Walmsley and McCarthy Scarsbrook and their big blokes have done a great job going forward as well St Helens still coming forward again here it's uh, Walmsley who's uh, taken it to within 25 metres Roby Walsh along the line Wheeler 
and it goes again. Lomax is in there, Percival comes in at pace, but he's lost the ball in the contact as he uh, was met by a Warrington defender. Is he hurt? No, he's not, he's okay. Just a bit of battered pride, that's all. The young Percival. Well, Monaghan, Jill Monaghan, I think it was the unexpected arrival of Benny Westwood that saw that ball bounce clear. But a small victory for the Warrington defence, and it will be head and feed here for Warrington, just about 10 metres from their own line. Attendance tonight, by the way, 13,157. So uh, it's a good crowd here tonight, as, we, as we've been saying all night. And a good noise coming from the St. Helens fans. Entry Park's going to be a bit full, isn't it? See, they, they put out a statement today, St. Helens, by the way. There's rumours going around that the winds last night caused a lot of damage at Lantry Park, but a statement from St. Helens saying only a little bit of damage, and the stadium is still fully operational, and uh, that little bit of damage will be sorted out quickly. So. Well, after this result, you best but believe it'll be full next time now. Here's the ball back on the inside. Ratchford for Warrington. 30 metres from his own line, going through the motions a little in these late stages because everybody knows who's going to win this game. St. Helens by a distance. Warrington 8, St. Helens 32. Four minutes left to play. Here comes Benny Westwood again. It's intercepted by Gorsh. And Lou Gorsh will catch an outstanding debut for St. Helens tonight. He kicks goals. He organises play. And now he's scoring tries. St. Helens by a distance. Luke Walsh is a star of Super League in the making. It is Warrington 8, St. Helens 36. He's a thief as well, he's a pickpocket. He's waited in the line there and Warrington obviously having to play to play a little bit of catch up, forcing the pass. Luke Walsh in the line, picks Ben Westwood's pass off and has a clear run in. They're not going to catch him. He's certainly endeared himself to the same fans, hasn't he? Well, he's loved every minute. I mean, at the start of every year, Certain players get big billing before they, they turn turn on any kind of performance. But there was a lot of anticipation about Luke Walsh and his St. Helens team. As Brian was saying, the, the, the missing link, if you like, in some respects. And um, he's certainly proved star billing is worthwhile so far in this opening game. And he's just taking his time here. Big sup of water from the water carrier who's come on down there. And he'll, uh, he'll take his time with the kicking team. And this is his moment, his moment in the spotlight. He can kick this goal and he can take all the acclaim and all the applause from the St. Helens fans, take all the time in the world. What a start, what a performance. He deserves all the plaudits, he's played well. Going down is the champ for the St. Helens fans, by the way. Sorry, you're going down. Relegation back on the agenda this year. There's one or two who we might put in the relegation favourites category as Walsh. Kicks it between the uprights and makes it 38 points to 8. But well, you wouldn't put Warrington in that category, although when Tony Smith took over, they were in a relegation position all those years ago, weren't they? So they had their moment of ill fortune. Walsh's goal, he's kicked a hat full to add to his try. It's been a, a star billing performance tonight. How many goals he kicked now? Six, seven, seven goals, seven out of seven. And um, he scored a try as well. Here it comes, the restart. That can't be right, because that, um, that doesn't add up. Anyway, we'll work out how many points he's scored. <laughs> hey, told you we needed some rhythm of count. <laughs> Here comes Walmsley, driving forward. 90 seconds left to play. The Halliwell Jones Stadium, that in uh, Primrose and Blue, for the most part, is empty now. Those in the red and white of St. Helens are staying to the final minutes of a fantastic opening night. 18 points. Luke Walsh has scored seven goals and one at try. Turns out Craig can count because he's the man who's worked it out. Here comes Wilkin. Now to Jordan Turner. Turner, 40 yards from his own line, but threatening again, keeping that ball tucked underneath his right arm. Threatening the flick, but takes the tackle from Riley. Josh Jones from Dobby Hart. Here comes Wilkin, bundling it forward, spinning around. And he's put down. Roby stands and waits to Dobby Hart. Picks up now, scampers forward. Can he see a gap? No, he can't because late wave is there. Roby just offered the pass again, but he's dragged down. Is he hurt here? No, he's not. No, he's not. He's, um, he's up. Oh, he might be, actually. No, he's not. He's OK. Wilkin drills the ball out of play. 36 seconds left to play. He's happy to see that ball bounce out. That might be the final act of the night, because neither side is uh, going to be too quick to pack this scrum down. I think they might as well blow the hoot on that. Brian Noble. That's been stood away. St. Helen's song echoing that. From the stand to our far right, where all those St. Helens fans are standing and waiting, 
We've got 12 seconds left here now, 10 seconds left to go, still neither pack willing to pack down. Referees not hurrying them up, or they will pack down, we'll have an extra 4 seconds. They will pack down and play it, here comes Riley, Riley tackles, 15 metres from his own line, and that is that. What a start by St Helens. Warrington 8, St Helens 38, and you have to say, Brian Noble, that was a super show from St Helens tonight.